Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Out YouTube channel and I am back today to share two more alternatives using the January 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the past few days, I have been sharing some alternative ideas for the Sending Hearts Paper Pumpkin Kit, which is from January 2021. These cards are already adorable by themselves, but I thought I would stop by with some different ideas in case you want to switch it up. In front of you on the screen now is a look at the cards I have made previous today. Over on the left, I made two clear cards, pretty much using the layout that Paper Pumpkin gave. And then over on the right, I made two slimline cards where I adjusted that sketch or that layout a little bit and made it so it was tall and skinny. If you would like to see either of these videos, I will have them linked in the description box below. If after seeing my video today, you might want to try out a paper pumpkin for yourself, I personally am not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but I do have my demonstrator, Chelsea Christensen, linked in the description box below. If you don't already have a demonstrator, I would love for you to give her a try. Most of my items from today's card will come from the kit, but a few things that don't is I have a scrap of white cardstock, Versamark ink, and some fine detail gold embossing powder. I will also grab a couple card bases from my stash. Once I start the voiceover, I will let you know if I add anything else. And as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's cards, I'm going to be doing the stamping. I did bring in my Misty for this, just in case I have to re-ink anything. And I will be using a combination of the Poppy Parade ink that came with the kit, as well as my Versamark ink with that detail gold embossing powder. The first stamp that I'm going to use from the set is the heart that is made up of smaller hearts and I just stamped this onto a scrap of white cardstock that I had here. I will end up stamping this off before I stamp it onto the final piece. So once I have inked that heart up, I bring in a scrap of cardstock, I just pull it out of my recycle bin, I stamp it on there first before bringing it to the cardstock that I'm going to use in the end. This gives me a lighter shade of red and later I'll be able to stamp over this. While I have that red ink out and handy, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment for the second card with that Poppy Parade ink. This stamp, once it is ready to go, will be inked up and just stamped in a solid red. I will not be stamping that off for a lighter shade. The sentiment says sending love your way and I thought it would go great with that little snail image. Speaking of the snail, that is what I'm going to do next. Now this will be stamped with Versamark ink and heat embossed with the gold embossing powder. I just wanted to switch it up a little bit and show you how you can use the stamps from the kits with stuff you already have and in in different ways. You may have noticed before I inked up the stamp, I did use my embossing buddy on that cardstock and that just helps when I pour the embossing powder over it that the powder sticks to mainly where I want it. I did have one little area that I had to brush some off and usually when I do embossing, I pour that powder on twice just to make sure I get a nice coverage. For now, I'm gonna set that to the side but I do bring in my heat tool and I'm just gonna, I think I spent 10 seconds just running the heat tool over that heart. That's so when I stamp later and put on my powder, it only sticks to the ink that is wet. For this card, I'm using the Love and the You stamp from the stamp set, and it did take me a little bit to get the arrangement how I wanted it on the heart. At first I thought I would tilt it, but then I 
couldn't get that angle exactly right so I did it a little bit differently you'll see me fiddle with it here for a little bit you're lucky it got sped up because I think the video time was two minutes it took me to figure out exactly how I wanted these stamps to lay but eventually I did get it where I wanted it so I picked up those stamps with the door of my misty once again I use that embossing buddy over that heart just so the powder only stuck to where I wanted it then it got inked up stamped and the powder got poured on top of it and now it was time to go ahead and melt the powder on both of the pieces now before I bring my tool to the actual cardstock piece itself I do warm it up for about 30 seconds off camera and I heat it from underneath and on top I think this helps melt the powder a little bit more quickly and it keeps the cardstock from warping too badly now I'm going to cut each of the pieces down to a nice even border. Because they are small pieces, I can just bring in my little Fiskars bypass trimmer. And I cut these so, I don't know, it's maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around. What I do is use one of the grooves on the plastic guard and just line my image up with that to try to get as even as a border as I can. To give a bit of a border and to tie in that gold embossing, I brought in a piece of textured gold cardstock. And what I like about this is the texture and the color is similar to the embossing powder. So I just put both of those pieces on the scrap and then once again I use that little trimmer to cut an even border. I need to do a little more cutting and since these pieces are bigger I did have to pull in my regular trimmer. I cut these cards almost in half just a little bit smaller. Each of the pieces I cut was four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. To keep with the theme of the kit I thought I would make some of my own scallop border pieces. I just brought in some scraps of black cardstock and this vintage, I'll call it, scallop border punch from Stampin' Up. And now it's time to start putting the cards together. I brought in all of the pieces for the first card, which does include that little scrap of striped paper from when I just cut my card front. I'm going to do a little bit of cutting here on my little trimmer just to trim down the scallop piece to fit and then I'll just show you how I put everything together. Because that little strip is so skinny I did bring in my art glitter glue and put a line of adhesive on the back of that and then I placed it toward the top of the scallop strip but I did leave a little black showing at the top. There was a little overhang on that striped pattern piece so I trimmed that off and then fiddled with the layout a little bit until I thought I had it where I wanted it. I placed that scallop strip just flat down on that piece of pattern paper and I once again trimmed off the overhang. I brought in just a card base I had in my stash and placed the pattern paper piece centered on that. Now for my focal point, I did want to pop that up to give a little more dimension, so I brought in the dimensionals from the kit, added some to the back, and placed that onto my card front. Now, you know, no card is usually finished with me unless there's a little bling. So I brought in some gold adhesive pearls from Couture Creations. These have a more brushed gold look, like the embossing powder and that textured gold cardstock, and I sprinkled five of those from the top left to the bottom right on the card front. And here's a look at the finished card. The process for the second card is pretty much the same, so I will speed through this a little bit quicker. But just like I've been doing recently, I want to take time to just chit chat here a little at the end of the video and let you know the question of the video. I introduced this in yesterday's video and I thought this is a fun way that you can learn a little bit more about me and then I can learn a little bit more about you. Now don't forget if you are going to answer the question of the video to put hashtag QOTV in your comment that way I know that you did purposely answer that question. Today I would like to know, have you ever heat embossed a stamped image or sentiment? I have to tell you that to this day, this is one of my most favorite things to do. I still think it's like magic 
when the powder turns from powder to that final embossed stage. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's two clean and simple alternatives using the January 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure that if you want to see more alternatives, go ahead and click on that subscribe button below if you haven't already. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.